war on black boys in this country. Yeah. In my opinion, there is a war on African American men. It is an absolutely deplorable situation that the United States, which is supposed to be the greatest nation on earth, allow, sits back and allows black boys to be murdered. Black boys being murdered in the context of Ferguson. Are you kidding me? The truth is that 91% of black homicide victims are killed by other blacks. 91%. Yet that woman tries to mislead folks by accusing American law enforcement of shooting down young black men in the streets. It's beyond belief. What is going on in this story is beyond belief. You know, Bill uh, O'Reilly came back from vacation, and he's, he's absolutely right. And Roger Simon joins us, co-founder and CEO emeritus of PJ Media, award-winning novelist, and um, wrote a great piece at, uh, at PJ Media, The Real Villain of Ferguson. Roger, good to talk to you again, sir. Uh, great to be here again. And, you know, it's interesting listening to that woman's screed. You know, the people who really hate black people are certain members of the black leadership. They're I the ones who really hate black people because they're the ones who are hazily making them feel like victims and they've been doing that for years and you get what you want if you get if you want to make someone feel like a victim forever they'll feel like a victim forever well you talk about uh, as the uh, title implies the, the who you believe or what you believe the real villain that that uh, Ferguson is but before we get to that i mean these these statements are what well, Michelle Bernard who you're referring to they're saying that you know the war on black boys and they're being murdered in the streets yeah but not by cops. Jesse Jackson telling me on this show when I pressed him with the police officer's version and I said, would that legitimize the shooting if it were true? And he went on to say no. He said, and then I said, would anything legitimize or, or, or excuse the shooting uh, you know, or make it appropriate in your mind? Uh, could, could Michael Brown have done anything? And he said no. I mean, that's crazy talk. Black, here, here's the, the brutal truth. Jesse Jackson hates black people. He does. He acts like a man who hates black people because he is ruining their lives by polluting their brains with that idiocy. Yeah, well, it's, 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 it, it certainly is idiocy. I mean, it certainly is idiocy to say that cops don't have a right to defend themselves under any circumstances. And, and you know, going to the mat, as, as, as the media has, uh, Roger, and, and these so-called black leaders and, and, uh, and spokespeople have, in, in a situation where, you know, the cop claims that he was beaten, his eye socket was broken, his gun was grabbed at, and the guy that came around and was charging him while he was woozy, uh, if that's the case, he has every right to shoot. They picked a pretty poor case to make an issue, wouldn't you say? Terrible case. I mean, if, if you imagine for a split second that was a black cop in that situation, uh, this story wouldn't even have happened. No one would have heard about it. It's true. All right, so, now you, you, you talk about, before we get to uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Great Society, you, you talk about the cast of characters um, you know, and, that, that you're seeing and, and, and Dr. Bade, uh, uh, Michael Baden and, uh, and, and some others, and you say, where, where's Marsha Clark? Does this, does this in, a, in a strange way, bring you back, uh, characters aside, bring you back to the uh, racial divide in this country um, uh, that we experienced during the OJ case? Sure does. I mean, the truth is, you know, it, interesting thing in part of my life, I was a civil rights worker in the South in the 60s. I was there. I did it. I loved it. And it was the, one of the greatest things I ever did because uh, that was great. But then it's just has gone south from there forever. It's crazy. I mean, uh, yes. And the OJ trial was probably writ large the first great example of kind of black racism in our country because there was no ra the only reason that OJ got freed is black racism. That's what yeah. it was. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about uh, you. You go on further in your piece and you, you talk about uh, um, the Great Society and and you ultimately blame the, the 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 Great Society. And you mentioned at the beginning how uh, Michelle Bernard's comments and people like her who say those things are are you know making perpetual victims out of out of uh, black Americans and. Um, and you believe that the Great Society played a large role in that. Yeah, I think the Great Society, I mean, look, was it deliberate or was it a good-hearted idea gone bad? Different ways to look at it, and it doesn't really matter it was bad because it, it was premised on the fact that black folks were incompetent and we always have to help them. The great thing about the Civil Rights Movement and Dr. King, as I understand him, although no one can fully understand him because he's dead, but as I understand him, he believed in equality and integration. Uh, after this, 
people like Lyndon Johnson and others started to believe that black folks were going to be were inferior and they had to be lifted up and made wards of the state. Now, if you do that to somebody, that's what they become. I mean, anybody knows that from their own families. If you have a cousin who's got a drug problem, you keep giving him drugs because, well, maybe he'll get better along the line and give him a little methadone or something. That never works. It just makes the person worse. It, it, uh, so you're, you're talking about what uh, this administration certainly has also uh, helped promote and expand, and that's uh, a, a society of dependency, a dependency on the, on, on the government, in that case on, on drugs, in this case on the government. And I just saw a statistic yesterday, uh, an outrageous, over 100 million people on quote-unquote welfare, some kind of government dole. And you know what happens ironically, and I think we all understand this from our own personal lives and watching things, is that you begin to, if you feel like you're a dependent, you begin to hate the person you're dependent on. That's really a human psychology. It's not black, white, or green. It's just the way human beings are built. And it's, it's natural. You want to feel like a free entity and, and, and pulling your own weight and have respect for yourself. So all this lashing out and anger on the part of black people, which is what, you know, when you look at Ferguson, you're seeing like insane lashing out over something that nobody even knows what happened. Nobody maybe ever will know what happened. And, and, but it's all based on anger that is misplaced and self-destructive entirely. Yeah. Let, let, I mean, it reminds me of Hamas. How, how so? Well, that's what Hamas is. It's massively self-destructive to Arab people who live in, in Gaza. It's all about anger at the Israelis for living successful lives, so they're going to have to kill them. And meanwhile, they don't do anything for themselves. They build all the terror tunnels. Let, let's where, and so it's really, there's a similarity of a psychology. Let's talk about Eric Holder uh, going to Ferguson. Before he went, he ordered a third autopsy. Uh, littered the place with FBI agents, uh, and then spoke at a college yesterday, and according to the, uh, the reports, because I don't think cameras were allowed in, he, he said that this is not about the law, it's personal. And then he went on to talk about how he was stopped on the New Jersey Turnpike when he was uh, in college uh, several times and how humiliating it was. You know, for, for an attorney general, to be talking about a specific case, to be in a town where a specific case and a, and a police officer's uh, uh, you know, freedom is in the balance and justice is in the balance, to, to say this is personal, uh, I, I gotta tell you, I would love a jury, if I'm the defense attorney, if he does go to trial, I would love a defense attorney to hear those remarks, uh, a jury to hear those remarks if I'm, if I'm the defense attorney, saying that the Attorney General of the United States said that this is not about the law, this is personal. You, uh, uh, can you as jurors make sure you're not influenced by that? Because that to me is outrageous. It's yeah, totally outrageous and it circles back to the original point because that is about victocracy. It's about saying, hey, we're victims. We're not real adults. We're just victims. We, and, 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 and that's what he's appealing to in his audience. Bernard Carey. You, yeah. you keep telling them they're victims, they'll be victims. You keep telling the guy you're a junkie, he'll be a junkie. But if you tell someone you're a free man and and, and, and you can, uh, you know, uh, get a job and do it yourself and have a great life, they might do it. Bernie Kerrig, the former G uh, New York City Police Commissioner, was here yesterday, and he said that the cop has been crucified and that uh, they, they have slaughtered, that's his uh, quote, slaughtered uh, any chance he has for a fair trial. Do you agree? Uh, probably. <laughs> Unfortunately. I mean, look, the, the one point in this that I would say the other side has is uh, that police force is, re is absurdly all white for a community that is so heavily black. That's ridiculous. I mean, I live here in L.A. We have lots and lots of black cops, as we should. Yeah, but how many black, but, but Roger, how many blacks, I asked Jesse Jackson this, how many blacks have applied to be cops? I mean, are they all being know. turned away? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but it's, uh, that's one thing that legitimately should be looked at. Aside from that, the specific, uh, the specifics of this case are ridiculous. And I'll give you one. And, yeah, I'll give you one more ridiculous, Roger. Before we go, they're complaining that this prosecutor has a bias and and uh, he can't be trusted to present the fair case to the grand jury, and he should step down because he's white and his uh, father was a cop and all his family were cops and blah blah blah. Uh, yet this guy in a mostly black district keeps getting reelected. So, well, so, so who's to blame for that? 
Well, th you know, that's a massive projection because the one person who's biased and should be and recuse himself is uh, Eric Holder. Yes. <laughs> I mean, he's the one who just expressed his bias in that speech you ex you uh, yeah, you yeah. alluded to at the university. I mean, it's absurd. Roger, Eric always Holder always great to talk. Dude. Always great to talk to you, sir. Thank you very very much. Appreciate always it. Always fun to be there. Take care. All right, folks. Before we go, we want your opinion. On our poll, is Rand Paul right? Do you think the Ferguson police are over-militarized? Uh, or do you agree with uh, Bill Crystal, who said Rand Paul is off the rails on that? Go to Newsmax.com slash polls to vote. Give me five is next.